Good afternoon, my name's David Wilkes, and I'm looking for £50,000 for 5% in my company, which manufactures a big water-saving product, which is in a little box called the Interflush, available from my website, interflush.co.uk. And I shall just demonstrate what it does now. Right, just one little problem with that and all other flushing devices. Press the handle, let go, and they all flush fixed volumes of water. The full system load, away it goes. Now, as you can see, that's a lot of water every time. So if I just refill that with water, that's it. And whilst that's filling, you'll note the colours of this, red, white and blue. It's invented in Yorkshire and it's made in Yorkshire. Right, so there's the toilet pan. So that's flushing, pan clear, let go, stop flushing. Just use what water you need. And when you fit this, you save 47% of the flushing water. And that's it basically, available in a box. David Wilkes' DIY innovation is a simple attachment to the toilet which enables the user to control the amount of water flushed by letting go of the lever. It has the potential to save millions of gallons, but only if he can persuade the public to buy into his concept. David, I'm Doug. Hi. Let's say somebody fits one of your thingamajiggers into their toilet. Mm, an interflush, yes. An interflush. That's a change of behavior, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you're proud of it. Um, because my habit, I can't speak for everyone else's toilet flushing habits, is when I push down the lever, um, I push it down until I hear the toilet flushing, and I let it go, because I guess I assume it's all going to kind of take care of itself. Yes. But now I'm going to have to pay attention, yes. aren't I? I'm yes. going to have to push it down and watch. Is yes. that correct? Yes, just glance. Well. <laughs> For a period of time, I will be looking at my crap going down the Yes, toilet. yes. Just checking. Da David, the thought of having to look at my shit when I go to the toilet afterwards is sort of borderline for me, especially if you're going, as I would call it when I was a little kid and I haven't changed now, I call it big toilet. So when you go to the big toilet, you can't wait to close that top seat down. So I can't get my head round watching as if it's some form of ritual being quite a proud moment with mm. perhaps a little well, bloodle sort of, you know, yodel in the background sort of saying it's finished now and it's all over and it's gone away. Right. Well, you've just built it up to such a massive thing. Most people look inside, look at the pan anyway to make sure it's clear for the next person. So talking this up that you're going to remember what's in the toilet, you don't remember it at all. All you remember is if it's out of the ordinary. Does that make sense to anybody else? David, David peripheral vision. It doesn't. It, it, doesn't, it gives me a bit of a vision of where you're going, but it, it, it sort of concerns me. Well, you're yeah. not looking at it with the X-ray eyes of Superman, are you? David, you're very aggressive. David's hostile manners not endearing him to the dragons. He'll need to work much harder to persuade them he's worth investing in. I now understand the device. Just one small thing I don't understand anything about the business? Uh, all the money invested in this so far is just from me. It's got patent coverage on it, so there's a worldwide licensing right. Um, it depends which way humanity wants to go, basically. I mean, at the I'm moment... sorry, say that again? It depends which way humanity wants to go. Oh, humanity. Well, humanity. Hmm. At the moment, we're using resources up at the rate of we need three and a half planets to supply them. Well, we haven't got three and a half planets, we've got one. Water saving is what it's all about. That may be the case. Uh, somebody, somebody else needs to run with this. David's desire to make the world a better place is not impressing the dragons. Duncan Bannatyne wants to know where he's been trying to sell his product. David, who do you see your main customer base as? Um, anybody who wants to save water and money, basically. I was hoping you were going to say that you already sold it to a chain of hotels or a chain of bobs or bars or something like that, but you haven't. Now, a lot of my time has been wasted, actually, talking to water companies. Their revenue is from selling water. So something that'll save them so much water. Well, basically, if 25% of the population fitted this, the water companies would have taken a drop in revenue of £300 million a year. Most companies are in business primarily to make money. That's right. And if the water company reduces the water flow, it reduces its profit. That's right. 
Right, you yeah. thought it would... OK, it took a while for the penny to drop, but it dropped. <sighs> I'm saying I wasted a lot of my marketing time on approaching those people. David's lack of business now has exasperated Duncan Bannatyne. If I invested in you, David, you would just drive me mad. You know, um, I'm out. OK. No problem. One dragon is already out. Peter Jones, though, wants more financial detail to understand the investment opportunity. David, can we talk about some specifics? Yes. What's your revenue that you're expecting to make this year? 200k. 200k revenue. Turnover. Turnover. And what profit are you expecting to make this year? Probably none in first year, in common with most businesses. Really? No, no business that I've ever started or been involved with? What price will you be selling them at? 17.95. What's the wholesale price? Wholesale price, that'll be £9. And how many of these products will you sell through wholesale and how many products will you sell direct? Wholesale, maybe uh, 20,000. And th through direct? 20,000. So you're going to turn over about 540,000 this year now? Is it? I'm right. Fine. You haven't got a clue, have you? David, uh, I think you're completely uninvestable as an individual. Uh, the product just, it doesn't do anything for me at all and I'm absolutely not interested in investing in the product or you. OK, no Sorry, problem. Ma'am. That's all right. David, I'm Theo. Hello, we haven't spoken. No, yeah. I'm not going to invest. OK. David's pitch is going disastrously. Only two dragons remain. Rachel Elnor suspects he's got his priorities all wrong. David, can I just ask, are you more of an eco-warrior than an entrepreneur? Yeah, I suppose I am, yeah. This could save 250,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide, over 500 million kilowatt hours of electricity. Are these more important to you than making money? The making money is a byproduct, that's true for me. The reason... You know, we're using all of the planet's resources up now is because everybody's obsessed with making money. David, I'm going to declare myself out. I don't think it's one for me at all. David, you may very well view yourself as saving the world. Oh, just water. In trying to save the world. But let me leave you with a message. I don't think you have a right to sit there and preach to me about how the world's going to hell in a handbasket solely because people want to make money, which is what you just said. I'll give you a response to that. There's a lot of good in making money. You want to know why? It drives people to do things, to innovate, to create, to be entrepreneurs, and to change the world. And so you say the business has to make money. No, it should be your driver to the, drive that profit, to drive this product. And because of that, you are not going to succeed. And so my message back to you is I would get off your holy horse. Well, I never was on one, and I'm sorry you got the wrong impression. I'm sorry you gave it. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. David Wilkes has felt the full force of the dragon's disdain. His opinions were completely at odds with theirs, and they could see no way of working with him. If it doesn't sell, he doesn't get to save the world. So if he could think about getting it to sell, then he might save the world. He's flushed ten years of his life down the toilet. Well, David, culture clash. But, but what do you mean, America? Well... There were a whole lot of culture guys. Yes, there were. They just didn't get it. The penny, um, the penny didn't drop. You came across, though, as quite defensive. One said you were aggressive. I think it, would, it looked more defensive, but it wasn't a kind of good way to persuade them of your point of view. They were asking the wrong questions all the time, and uh, they hadn't understood it, really. They hadn't understood that uh, we do need to save water. I've never met anyone who has so much strong feeling about toilet flushing, but it's really been a great pleasure. It's a waste of water. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shazia Mustafa. I'm the Managing Director and Co-Founder of Third Door Work Hub and Nursery. Hello, my name's Yusuf. I'm the Co-Founder of Third Door. We are here today to um, raise £120,000 in return for 20% equity in our innovative business. For many working parents, childcare can be expensive and inflexible. And if you're a home-based employee or home-based worker, having a new baby at home can be great, but it can also affect productivity. So we found a new solution, a new way of working. Third Door 
is a integrated combined professional workspace with an on-site flexible daycare nursery. Basically, the parents drop the child off at the nursery, walk up the stairs, and they're in the work hub, professional offices with everything you need for a modern office. In the last four years, we've taken an idea through to concept, through to break even, and hopefully with your investment, you can help us to grow. Okay. So our investment so far has been about 400,000. The turnover in our first year was only 58,000. Uh, loss was about uh, 193,000. Uh, year two has been 193,000. Yeah. With a net loss of 11,000. Yeah. Year three, we're projected to make 381,000 with a net profit of uh, about 90,000. And this, your third year is about to start or is you're in it now? It's, it's about, about to start. start. Okay. So where have you spent all that money? We paid 60,000 rent deposit. Our fit out was about 200,000. Wow. Well, the, 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 the rent is uh, 60,000 a year and then working capital. So I'm struggling to see why you're losing so much money. Okay. <laughs> How many children can you accommodate? 24. 24? Yeah. Well, £400,000 to spend for 24 children is too expensive. Okay. That is a disaster. What do you think the value of your office space is? What rent can you get for your office space? Um, I'd say more than 1000 a day. Well, it seems to me that you should just close the nursery and rent it out then, because that's 365,000 a year. You're projecting 381,000 pounds worth of revenue. Yeah. You know, so when's your year end? A year end's actually August, but we've been giving you the figures based on since we've been open. So May to April and then May to April again. Does that make sense? Uh, well, it gets slightly complicated. Okay, it, it does. So, so, it does so, complicate things yeah. slightly because okay. it'd be nice to say, when I looked at a set of accounts at my last year end, mm -hmm. that was my profit figures. Okay. So if we looked at your accounts, what would they say? Okay, so the accounts for the, the end of year one... Um, sorry, let me just think about this. You've got your accounts, know they're, you know, they're, 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 know you print them out, the number at know, the bottom. I know, I know, um, They're the most important number of the year. Yeah. You I know. must remember them, I know. remember them. <laughs> I know, we, yeah, we, we don't, we don't. We've just uh, gone yeah. blank at the moment. What I can definitely tell you, from September 2011 to date, we've made 131,000. Okay, turnover. Two numbers before is what we can't remember because we've been focusing on the others. Um, the loss on that was, do you remember the loss? Because they're the two numbers on the yeah. thing. I'm getting fed up with us. Yeah, I know. Well, the burn rate is about 21k a month. So if you look at the 21k a month burn. I'm getting really frustrated here. Sorry, can I ask why you're getting frustrated? I'm getting frustrated because you've ignored the most commercial, profitable part of that business plan and pitched the most unprofitable part and can't even remember the figures okay, to do it. Let's, 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 let, let's, let's, I'm very sorry. I'm out. I think you forgot that actually the most important thing about the business is detail. It's sometimes the pressure of the den can get to people mm -hmm. and it's clearly got to you. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Next to face the dragons is Jonathan Astor from London. Now he's making a good living from his business, but he wants £100,000 from the dragons to turn it into something much bigger. Remember, he has to get at least that amount or he goes away with nothing. Ah, hello. Um, my name is Jonathan Astor. Um, I'm here to present my company, The Ambient All Stars. Um, I set up my company three and a half years ago um, off the back of just an idea that just came to me. Um, that idea was simply advertising on the back of courier bikes, uh, predominantly in the London area. And I was the, one of the first, first people to advertise on smart cars, using it as a media. 
naturally, um, being an innovator and an entrepreneur, um, I've enjoyed working within ambient media. Ambient media is the generic term for anything that's deemed to be innovative, creative, um, and non-traditional. One final piece is something that I'm developing as a clean ad. This idea here is quite simple in the terms that we take a stencil, we place it on a street, we apply um, a high-pressure hose over it, we remove the stencil, and by, 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 by lifting dirt off the street, we leave an impression on the street. So it becomes an environmentally friendly advertisement. I'm looking for investment to really take this company and project it onto the marketplace as one of the most innovative, non-traditional niche media specialists in the UK. Jonathan wants £100,000 to build his offbeat advertising agency, and in return, he's offering 15% of the company. Jonathan, hi, I'm Rachel. Hi. The immediate thing, having dealt with lots of creative agencies and media planning ones, they're notoriously difficult to scale, aren't they? Because they're all about ideas and innovation. The investment, therefore, is in you, and I'm just struggling to see what the investment opportunity is. You're right, it does, uh, it, it does centre around me at this minute in time. A large part of the investment will go towards creative support. In five years' time, what I want to do is, is selling off a very niche crack team within ambient media to a large media group. Mm. So the knowledge will be passed on. At the moment... Um, it's, it's not about knowledge, though, is it, Jonathan? It's about creative innovation. So if you go under a bus, there's a, there's a serious problem. It's an immediate problem. I mean, I, I didn't plan for being run over by a bus. Answering back to Rachel Elnor is not the best way to win investment. Unlike Jonathan, she thinks a business based entirely on his creative ideas is high risk. Duncan Bannatyne has different questions. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. 2004, turnover and profit? Um, is £125,000. Profit on that is £65,000. Turnover £125,000. Made 65,000. Was that before your wages or after your wages? That, that is something that, that I've taken um, as my salary. Right. Were there any employees? Did you employ anybody no. else? No. Jonathan, where are we going with this? I mean, you're a one man band. The salary that you've earned over the last uh, three years is way, way below what uh, a senior executive in an agency would be earning anyway. I, 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 I'm, sure, I'm sure that's not right. the, the central point of what you're trying no, to say. I, I don't agree with that, but, but, but maybe well, that's not your point. But, well, Sorry. Well, please agree with it, because until recently, I owned a very successful one, so I know what I was paying my people. Sure, of course. Right, so I know exactly what they were earning. They would have been earning a lot more than this. Now, cars have been around, taxis have been around. I was advertising on cars and taxis. <sighs> 1990, 91. Sure. So it's not new. I'm not I, I, sure I, I, where I, we're going with it. What, I, what you've got that's other than I'm Jonathan, I'm a great guy, back me. I appreciate your point on the age of salaries. If you own an agency, you, you're aware of salaries, so I apologise for that. Um, I still don't agree with it, but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's totally irrelevant. In terms of, of, of the, the, in terms of the actual concept here, it's not taxi advertising, different. It is a transport media and serves a similar purpose, but it's not that. You, you can frown and, and, and pull a face at it. I would never ever pull that face because I have confidence in, in, in what I've started. That, that, that doesn't mean that I don't respect your opinion. I do. I'm just trying to be fair, f fair with you. Do, do, do not respect my opinion. No, right? sure. I, I don't, don't, right. don't want to come across no, as confrontational no, with you because, no. because I, I, I respect your opinion. Uh, listen, not a problem, mate. Fine. That's not, good. Not, so, not, not a problem. Let me finish. Sure. Not a problem. Right. I would rather stick pins in my eyes and invest in this. So on that basis, I'm out. Yeah, in which case, considering that's your term of speaking, I don't want to be rude to you. I don't think that's the way to conduct. I wouldn't want you to, to work with you. So Good. I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy to rule you out, but I wish you best of luck in what Likewise. Jonathan's refusal to accept any criticism has antagonised Theo Pafitis. With one dragon already out, will Doug Richard follow suit? Jonathan. Fundamentally, I have absolutely no idea how this would translate into a scalable investment. Okay. Period. I, I, literally, I, I cannot imagine how. And the exit opportunity is selling a team of people, notoriously hard to do, um, and I don't see how I'd ever make money on it, so I, I'm, I won't invest. I think that's a, I think that's a far more pleasant way of, of, of responding to that, and, and, and I appreciate your comments. Jonathan is losing the dragons rapidly. 
Can he persuade Duncan Bannatyne, Rachel Elnor or Peter Jones to put in the £100,000 he needs? If there was a choice of sticking pins and needles in my eyes or investing in you, I would invest in you. But if it's a choice between standing in the shower and letting the money drip away and investing in you, I'd be stuck and wouldn't know which way to go. I mean, you're a one-man band. And even the one man in the band fights with everybody who's considering investment in them. I, 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 I cannot agree. As I mentioned before, I don't mean to be confrontational, but, but at the end of the day... You are confrontational, whether you mean to be or not. And that's the reason I wouldn't invest in you or your company. It, it, that, that, that's fine with me. Determined to stand his ground, Jonathan is alienating the dragons one by one. Can he keep himself in check with Rachel Elnor and Peter Jones? Uh, I'm Peter. Um, Hi, Peter. I'm, I'm pleased to say that you've uh, you've clearly dressed up for the occasion today. Um, it obviously means a lot to you to be here. Which, which it does. Um, and dressing like that certainly doesn't appeal to me. So first off, you, you've already instantly got my back up, which only means one thing. It means that unless you've got a fantastic business and a great pitch, you're not going to get me in. And, and what you haven't got is a great pitch. You've given nothing away that actually would suggest that you've got a business here that's going to make money, apart from perhaps feather your own cap and put money in your pocket, which clearly you need because you, you couldn't afford a suit today. I'm, I'm not used to ignore that comment. I think it's, it's, it's nonsensical. It doesn't, it, it has it's no... nonsensical. I'll tell you it, what... It, go, it, goes, it, goes, it goes right through me. Let, but, but, well, but, well, let me explain to you that it's not nonsensical for one reason and one reason only. I'm not asking you for money. You're asking me for money. And had you known that it's about presentation for Peter Jones, to get my first interest... That's how I gauge it. Because you get one chance and one chance only, and you blew it for me. I I'm, I'm, don't want to be judged for my clothes that I wear. Uh, it's how I live my life. OK. You haven't given me anything that's innovative. I can't see the business ever making money. I'm not going to invest in you today. That's fair enough. Thank you. Jonathan, it, this isn't an investment, is it? You are a creative innovator, and there are loads of really small, successful agencies or medium-sized agencies, and, and really that's your niche. But this isn't an investment proposition, and I think that's, that's the problem today. No, I, that's fair enough. So I, I'm out, I'm afraid. It's all over for Jonathan, who endured one of the most savage confrontations yet in the dragon's den. That guy is prickly. He's Talk prickly. about... But that's uh, his uh, world. That's how they all uh, are in that he's world. It's just his world. Well, his world's the world of business. He's when got you tell clients. him something he disagrees with. And, Can you imagine and him saying that to the client? Tells you you're wrong and you know but for a fact. that's how they are. Yeah. That's no, how no, they're no, like no, with no, the clients. No, 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 no. Rachel, believe it or not, I've actually spent a little bit on marketing and advertising in my life. And you know, some of them are better than him. <laughs> Well, you didn't get the money, obviously. It was quite a prickly confrontation, really, wasn't it? I didn't mean to obviously come across confrontation. Obviously, I've got the greatest respect for, 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 for five very successful people. But there's no reason why I should sell myself short, because, because no. they, 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 they shouldn't really intimidate me by something that I feel to be irrelevant. So when you answered Theo back, how, what were you feeling? Were you cross? Were you, were you in control at that stage? I wasn't feeling at all angry or violent. I'm not an angry or violent person. I didn't feel anything. I, ju I just felt... That just seems the right thing to say now. Yeah. I, I looked him in the eye and I just wanted to, want him to, to, to know that even though I respect his opinion, I've got a, a big respect for what I do.